Hello everyone and welcome to the second tutorial of this video series in which we are learning about the Manum Python animations library and in this specific video I would just like to go over a couple of things that we may need that we've already discussed in the previous series especially with regards to animation when it comes to rendering our files and brush up on some of the concepts that we may have missed out on a little bit and so one of them is that on the first video of the series we've learned how to install the ffmpeg video codec command line compiling tool and so this allows us to even animate our previous matplotlib graphs using the ffmpeg codec compiler instead of the pillar writer okay and so over here i just want to illustrate to you that if i import the normal standard libraries that we would normally use and i set the animations .html to jshtml on the parameters for my plot library then i can still produce animations inside of the web browser but i can now also use a different writer instead of using the polar writer to produce gifs but the advantage is that i can also produce video file formats so just to illustrate to you i'm going to produce this sine graph which is defined by x over here and the linear space t and then this axis takes this empty list and it updates or appends to that list new values for x and t and then we call the function animation method we pass in the figure and the animation function that we've written over here based on the index i and then we also render a certain number of frames and we're going to produce this gif file over here under the directory on my machine under graphs okay and so if I run that procedure, it's going to produce an output on the browser, which we can interact with. Okay, like that. Something that we're already accustomed to under graphs. It's produced this graph called myfirstgraph.gif. If I open that, it's basically an uh, animation, okay, which is compiled using the Pillow Writer compiler. And so basically what I would like to illustrate to you is now that we have the FFMPEG codec video compiler available to us, we cannot change this writer to FFMPEG, okay? The advantage here is that we can still write GIFs using the same video compiler, right? So it's still going to produce that same graph. So by running this command, it does still produce a browser output which you can interact with. And if I look in my directory, I still have this graph over here so it just produces a new graph using a different writer all right but as i've mentioned before we can then change the file type to mp4 and we can just get a different file format inside of our graphs directory and this time it's a video that will play with a vlc video player okay so that's great and i can also produce mkv video format by writing that command up. all i've just done is i've updated the extension in my file name and so here i get an mkv file format okay and so now you can embed even videos in your lessons as well as images gifs everything like that okay so, so another thing that i would like to mention before i conclude this tutorial is that there is a lot of resources available to us when it comes to learning more about Manum in greater detail or in greater depth. And so what I've done here is I've come onto the manum.community page and there's two tabs that I'd like to explore with you guys. Well, one of them that you can do on your own is the documentation for using the Manum library. We've kind of already covered it, not in such detail, but enough for us to install it on our system. The other is that I would like to show you what we can actually do with Manum. Visiting this link made with Manum, you will see a bunch of videos on what people have actually already done using this library. And some of the pioneers in the area of mathematical animation. You know, over here we have three blue and brown. That's Grant Sanderson over there. This is Benjamin Hackle. He's another one of the animation fathers, if you will. Well, there's really no better way of learning maths than to actually do it in as many different possible ways that you can possibly think of. And this will really not only keep you sharp, it'll make you a really good programmer. It'll make you a really good problem solver. It'll really make you a good mathematician overall and analyst. <laughs> you know, you, you name it, anything that involves a little bit of science and, you know, processes and stuff like that. This is really what you want to be using. And so I really believe from my personal perspective that this is the standard of online education and where we're heading in, in the 
future in. And not even that far from now, we all expect it in a sense, at least if you classify yourself in any way, or if you see yourself as being involved in any way in the mathematics community or the science community, this is a very good place for you to start to learn about maths, programming, science, all these things combined into one place specifically. You know, they're doing a lot of good work in terms of advancing this as a standard for you know mathematical simulations and modeling and stuff like that so there's obviously many ways of doing something but this is a really neat and interactively aesthetic or beautiful way of doing it so it looks really pretty you know and yeah so but for now i just want to close this tab you can go through that on your own and explore a lot more of these videos and see for yourself Another feature, I think, on the website for the Manum community, is what we should look at is to try Manum online. And if I open that tab, basically it's going to take us to Manum's own Jupyter Notebook file, which is a way of getting you started easily if you're already familiar with the Jupyter Notebook environment. And that's why I've chosen us to start with the Jupyter Notebook environment in our first series, because it all builds up in a sense, you know. And so what you'll see over here is there is a download option on the Jupyter Notebook, but I already have that downloaded anyway. So I'm going to suggest you download that and save it to any directory and I already have it here so I'm going to open it, it looks like this. It says welcome to Manum and then they show you that if you have already installed Manum as a library you can import everything as we normally do with libraries in Python. It then adjusts the media width and the verbosity to warning and if you run the cell by running shift and enter it's just going to produce the community version and so you can read through the documentation yourself but what's really required here is that you are at least somewhat familiar with object-oriented programming so they will be using terminology such as class or method but don't worry too much about that because these are things that i think we will cover as we go on along this course okay you'll also see that they use magic commands as i've discussed in one of my previous tutorials but this one is specifically focused to the manum library but yeah as i said we're going to explore that in another tutorial for now i just wanted to give you familiar with the environment for using manum and its resources available online and its community support and you know being able to to integrate your previous knowledge with this new way of doing things that we're going to be looking at into the future but this is not where it stops i will obviously still produce more content in terms of presentations and how i think it should be done and even in tertiary institutions not only using videos but also using using presentation tools all right so i hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial it might have been a bit disappointing or anticlimactic but i hope to see you in the next one